All right, friends at home, how about now? Yes, okay, Heather smiling, great. Awesome. I was cute. <laughs> they haven't missed much. We're just going, going through some names. And uh, tonight's agenda is available online. And in the back of the room, the meeting has been publicly posted. It is being recorded and subject to Vermont's open meeting law and council's rules and procedures, which are available online. I'd like to offer a warm welcome to all of our guests joining us uh, tonight. And to those of you joining us online, please keep in mind that the chat function should only be used for technical issues or difficulties. The city offers online access as a convenience and will continue the meeting if any technical difficulties occur. Uh, please raise your hand or signal if you'd like to be recognized. I'll call on speakers in order, allowing people who haven't spoken yet to speak first, living time if necessary to do the city's business. If you're um, online, you can use the raise hand function. And if you're here, uh, just raise your hand and I'll ask that you come to the front table and speak into the microphone. Otherwise, I request that everybody stays uh, muted. Um, if you have any questions about process or procedure, please ask and we'll get it sorted. And I want to thank everybody in advance for participating in a civil way. Council, are there any adjustments or is manager of Strong Cash or any adjustments to the agenda today? Not no. right. Hearing and seeing none, that takes us to business and communication. This is an opportunity uh, for anybody who would like to speak to a matter that's not on the agenda tonight. If you're, if you're here tonight to speak to a matter that is on the agenda, um, you can speak uh, as we take up that on with business. I see uh, a hand raised, um, Heather Slayton. Hi, um, I am, yes, I'm here to speak for public comment. Is that time now? Sorry. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It was blipping a little. Um, so I am here on behalf of Washington County Mental Health Services because apparently I need my own chat function. There must have been some technical difficulty while I was working remotely. Um, I did attempt twice to send in our um, request for funding to be placed on the ballot for you folks, which apparently didn't make it through until I tried once again today, which obviously is past your due date. So I am just here to request mercy and not having to go out and request um, petitioners sign to get us on that ballot. We've been on there for several, several ballots now. And I'm hoping that you would allow us to once again be on the ballot to request funding in the amount of $10,000 for Washington County Mental Health Services. So thank you for your comments. Are there any questions from members of council? Councilor Stockwell? What particular programs at Washington County Mental Health? I'm sorry? What particular programs at Washington County Mental Health? Are you asking what programs that funds? Yes. So. Every year, all of the town funding requests that are approved, all of those dollars go into our general fund. Okay, great. Okay, gotcha. Thanks. <laughs> yep, so it funds everything. And last year in Barry City, in our fiscal year, we served 1,145 clients just in Barry City, and that provided 104,404 unique services for a total of 258,084 service hours. That's just in the city of Barrie. In case anybody wonders how much we do just, just in Barrie. So we really appreciate those dollars. Thank you. Is there no other? Council Lozo? Uh, just, well, Heather, first of all, thank you for your good work. And uh, as always, I will look to the clerk. Is there any reason why this could not be warned on January 31st? Um, the, they uh, didn't get their application in and support materials by the January 3rd deadline. Um, and the only opportunity at this stage of the game to uh, be placed on the ballot is to either submit a petition by the 19th um, with signatures uh, of 10% of the Barry City voters, or uh, council has the authority and statute to place on the ballot anything it wants. So. Yep, got to recommend for me. <clears throat> oh, just put your right on the spot, don't uh, I? <laughs> I, I, I? I think we need to hold to the policy, okay? So that would give Washington County mental health until the 19th? 
yes. I believe you said. Yep. And they would have to procure how many signatures approximately? 600. 600. Heather, how does that sound? <laughs> what? What was the other option though, Carol, that we could I could beg for mercy if the council would the, the council does have that authority to decide that they could place it on there. Correct. I'm not sure that I could in now nine days find enough feet to walk around to get 600 signatures without taking away from services. So another logistical question. This um, this would be something that needs to be added to the budget this evening if it were to be approved by council. Um, it's not something that comes up uh, when we look at the coming in the morning. It, it would. <clears throat> yes and yes. <laughs> um, because it uh, because it's not um, part of the 20 organizations that submitted applications uh, by the deadline, those are included in the budget as is being presented this evening. Um, this would go on the, the, the policy says this would appear on the ballot as a separate item, um, as its own item. If it were approved by the voters, it would then get added into the budget. So similar to the separate line items for the street and capital line item, those, those other um, funding line items that are on the ballot that ultimately get added into calculating the, um, the tax rate, et cetera, it would be added into the budget. And last year, man, last year? Yes. Um, they were yep. on. Yep. They they had submitted the documentation by the deadline last year. Yeah, and I apologize, Heather. Could you go into a little more detail uh, in terms of why that didn't happen this year? So the person whose job that once was is no longer here. And we, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this. At the time when this part of that job would normally have been completed for all of the towns in Washington County, we learned that none of them had been done. And so I've been scrambling to do them all in a very short period of time. And not all of them got caught in time. This one I did on the, I completed on the 27th and should have followed through to make sure that it went through. But at that point I was honestly working remotely because all the kids were home from school and it was that week between holidays and doing it from home. So I should have checked to make sure that it went through because <laughs> I did it December 27th. Um, it went through from the office today where I was working. So that was good, but too late. Um, but yeah, all of the, every town was, not late, but they were all being done at once because that I found the whole file undone. But that person's not there anymore. And this is not part of my normal job or was not. Will be now. And so we're playing a little catch up. Thank you, Mayor, for being brave enough to weigh in on this conversation. <laughs> Because this is hard, Heather. This is tough. Um, yeah. yeah. So thank it's a you. little messy. <laughs> and I, I think we have one more, one more person here to speak, speak to this. So, then if you want to come forward. <laughs> For the record, uh, Dan Barlow, I'm the executive director of the People's Health and Wellness Clinic, um, right over over here behind the City Hall Park. Also a Ferry City resident for the last nine years. I'm in a very similar situation as Washington County Mental Health. Uh, realized last Thursday that we had missed the deadline for the, uh, the application. We have um, appreciated the uh, the funding from uh, the residents of Ferry City for many years uh, with the three thousand dollar allocation to support the work at the clinic. And for those unfamiliar with our work, we are a free healthcare clinic for people who are underinsured and uninsured. 
Um, and just this in the past year, we served um, 155 dairy residents. Uh, that is 115 visits with a primary care doctor, 76 visits with a dental hygienist. Um, and um, uh, I have to say, Carol was a, a professional as always and sent several email reminders. Unfortunately, those were going to uh, the inbox of a staffer. Uh, were not sent to me. Um, and uh, I do apologize. I take full responsibility. And uh, I swear if uh, uh, the council would uh, um, give us some leniency here, um, uh, this would not happen again under my tenure. And, and uh, as a follow up, uh, I don't think either of you would be asking for any additional funds than you received in previous years. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Is that correct, Heather? It is, yes. Uh, Council Walker. Go ahead. Well, I, I guess I'm sticking my foot right into my mouth. Um, these are two entities that I think are very essentially in Barry and essential in Washington County. And I hate to set a precedent or to even talk about setting a precedent, but I I do think that maybe we should consider granting rain music. I was gonna say the same thing Councilman Bell just said that these are two organizations that do a lot of good and help a lot of people in Barrie. And what are we doing here? We're not trying to help folks. So I, I don't know if we need a motion tonight or we could get it placed on next week's agenda, um, but I would be inclined just to uh, have the council vote to put these two funding requests on the ballot. Would there be any, any opposition adding this as the, uh, after our capital improvement plan but before the budget conversation? That is on C2. Is that a motion? Uh, no, just to get oh. it on the agenda. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm trying to get it on the agenda. Oh, I got you. Okay. Uh, uh, so we're under business and communications right now. We have no other style. I'm trying to get this on the agenda so the council can take action on it. No objection. Okay. Item okay. right. C2. Uh, discussion of outside agency funding that um, it sounds like it just was uh, technical issues. Okay. And I, I just want to say, you know, I, I understand the precedent and the importance of deadlines, and it, it's been a hard couple of years for everybody, especially social service organizations. So, you know, it's we can cut those in great And I think that's okay. All right. We'll take up that item as it is, and then that takes us to our consent agenda. We have, uh, unless there's any other items of precision communication. Thank you, Dan. And thank you, Heather. Thank you for considering. Yeah. Hearing and seeing no other items for business and communication, we have uh, four items on the consent agenda. We have approval of the minutes of the regular city council meeting of uh, January 3rd, 2023. We have approval of the city warrants from the week of Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. Uh, do we have any offices, uh, clerk's offices like this is a permit? So nothing there. And approval of a letter of intent for the Northwest uh, Transit Oriented Development Grants. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. By Councilor Lozon, second by Councilor Sean Bell. Any discussion? Just one uh, point that I'd make on the, the transit oriented uh, development grants. It sounds like um, there were some ideas um, kind of being brainstormed by staff uh, for what, uh, what that might cover. But um, my understanding is that it's mostly about uh, uh, master planning for right, um, the larger downtown area, potentially an opportunity to look at. Um, to roll a couple of projects together, like the uh, Summer Street and Elm Street Master Plan right. updates, um, which I know we have another grant application out yep. for right now, but um, pending that, um, those two might be able, be able to couple together, and that's a hundred thousand dollar grant. Up to yep, uh, up to hundred thousand. Any other items of discussion? Okay. Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. The ayes have it, consent agenda is adopted, that's on the works. That takes us to item five on the agenda, the city clerk and treasurer report. Just a continuing reminder that uh, um, there's town meeting election information on the city website. 
on most notably a list of the offices that are up for election, not only um, for the city of Barrie, but also for the Barrie Unified Union School District. Um, and information about uh, nominating petitions and deadlines. The deadline for nominating petitions is January 31. Um, and uh, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to contact me. Um, clearly, the postcards landed in people's mailboxes over the weekend because we were flooded with phone calls starting yesterday, people requesting absentee ballots. So that's great. I'm always happy when um, then when people get the uh, the postcards and then um, act on them, putting their requests in, um, we've gone from like six to a hundred in <laughs> forty eight hours. So, um, and you can either call into the office to place uh, place your request, or the postcard also gives you the website um, where you can go on and uh, make the request that way. So, whatever works best for you. Um, I think that's it. For the active voters, what's the Secretary of State's definition of an active voter? Uh, an active voter is somebody who hasn't been challenged. A challenged voter is someone who hasn't voted. We're required by law in every odd number year to um, review the voter checklist in the summer and send letters to what are referred to as challenge letters to all voters who haven't voted in the last two general election cycles, um, asking them, hey, do you still live here? Do you still want to be on the voter checklist? Um, and once those letters get mailed out, their, their um, status is changed to challenged. Um, so the people who are on the list as active are ones that have voted in the last two general election cycles. So are there people who vote in town meeting elections that don't vote in the general election? And vice versa. Yeah, but it's just the general election that's uh, that's, that's counted, yes. Okay. Yeah. It, it's federal. Uh, it's kind of federal. Any other questions for Clerk Treasurer Dawes? If you want to learn more, come to the BCA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Where we review 6,000 names. That takes us to our liquor control board and cannabis control board. But yeah. I think we have any items, right? Okay. So the city manager. Thanks, Mayor. A um, couple of things for council. Uh, you may have noticed uh, maybe driving in tonight, there's a lot of water on the corner of Main, uh, South Main and Prospect. And uh, that's because there's a leak on the, the water main uh, right beneath there. So this was identified by our. our Cruise last night. Um, they spent the day getting ready to do the fix, and they're going to actually be doing the fix probably by the time we're leaving here tonight. So there'll be some traffic uh, diversions uh, right downtown. Uh, decided to uh, do this in the evening to minimize the impact on traffic, obviously, because of the location. Um, so we've uh, put the notice out on the website uh, and on our social media, um, and uh, our crews will be working tonight. I expect about six hours uh, job to be completed. So hopefully we'll be back to normal uh, for the morning commute. Um, and um, another note, water service, this is in the notice that's been posted, water service between 111 South Main and 40 North Main um, will be interrupted uh, for the repair. Again, that's a six hour. Um, Today, Clerk Dodd and I were able to have the second of two uh, open meeting law and Zoom trainings for uh, committee members. Uh, just want to thank again the folks who showed up. Um, a lot of people take a lot of time to serve on uh, the committees, and we also ask them to do extra things like come in for Zoom and open meetings law training. So I want to thank everyone who showed up to both trainings, especially, uh, you know, they were one of them certainly close to the holiday. Um, about time of year to maybe find time for that. So uh, good training, a lot of good questions. I think people took a lot away from it. One of the things that uh, that I didn't mention under my uh, report and should have is the current uh, emergency legislation around open meeting laws that allows meetings to be held um, completely on Zoom uh, expires the end of this weekend. Um, but the legislature has taken up a, a bill to extend that. However, in all likelihood, next week, it will not be in place. We will need to have physical locations in addition to Zoom for committee meetings. But the legislature is um, working very quickly to get that um, put in place. Um, I'm meeting with House Government Operations and Military Affairs tomorrow morning to talk about it. So we're hoping that gets moved forward very quickly. 
And uh, one last thing, and maybe you, this is your recusal. Uh, I don't know, we were notified today that um, uh, Janet applied for a grant uh, in October, I believe, um, by law modernization grant. We were received notice from ACCD today that uh, she was awarded that grant with her hard work. So thank you, Janet, for that. It's a 27,000 grant. Yeah. Uh, we're with the planning commission on that, as I, as I understand. And, um, so thank you, Janet, for doing that. And then one last thing I'm going to ask uh, Chief Vale, if you could join us. You may have uh, read about an incident at Spalding High School. And I think before you get questions, uh, that would be good to hear from the community. So there, there was also a press release that went out this evening. There was an incident at Spalding High today where a um, airsoft pellet gun was brought into the school. And two students were involved, two freshman students, and subsequently a teacher was struck in the back with a pellet, so the gun was fired, discharged. Um, it's under investigation, and once we determine which one of the two students fired the gun, they will be charged. As a juvenile or adult? Uh, well, that's that is under the youthful offender. Uh, laws that's up to the court, but gotcha. we, we send it down as such, and they they make that determination. Understood. Thank you. Any other questions? Is this a result of continuing things between these two students, or is that something that you'll find out maybe later in your investigation? Uh, we're not sure um, what, what if there was an issue between the students. We think it was just the gun was brought in, was being displayed, showing yes. them sure. something happened. Okay. I, I asked you about the school. Show up. <laughs> like, huh, what's going on today? That's what? No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions for the city manager? I just say we had the police advisory committee meeting last night, um, and the mm -hmm. members, multiple committee members, raved and raved about the open meeting law oh, good. training. And I was like, well, I, you know, good feedback about how good and exciting the open meeting law training was. I was like, the passion of our city volunteers. Is the passion uh, was very well represented. I believe sixty percent uh, membership participation on the training. So it's great. Be careful, there might be a next secretary of state here. <laughs> so that takes us to our first item of new business, which is a uh, visit from the Barry Area Development Corporation to talk about their FY twenty four budget, uh, which was at the request of. Uh, Councillor Lozon, um, and, and I think uh, Mr. Green, you're going to kick it off, right? So, so much. Yeah. Mayor, if I just may, um, Council, on your desks, you should have had a, another piece of information that came from MA. Uh, didn't have a chance to email, but left it for you. Uh, for the record, I'm MA Green, Executive Director of Barry Area Development. Thank you so much for having us back, Mayor, Roger, Steve Trevor, and all the Council members. To discuss our additional requests for marketing support, marketing coordinator, along with me here this evening, Shannon Alexander, who's been in the role since June of this year. So, what I wanted to do is spend a little bit of time going through the presentation that uh, you all have and then with some questions and answers. I also sent some additional supporting documentation as well um, to talk about our request. Just a quick review on um, page two of Barry Area Development's benefits um, to the Barry community as a whole. Uh, and our mission is to nurture, promote, sustain, and implement economic development in our community uh, to coordinate economic development services and varying state and federal agencies and organizations that impact economic and housing development in our community. Uh, to collaborate with the Barry Partnership and other private not for profits and government sectors, joint marketing and business recruitment and retention, uh, to act as a point of contact for information and support regarding economic development in both municipalities, and to develop uh, and work with funding sources to assist and sustain housing and business in our community. So, with that, I'll jump into our additional request for marketing support. And our focus in this winter ahead uh, being primarily on uh, four things economic strategy, housing, business development, and strategic planning, all of which require um, marketing support in order to effectively uh, deliver. Um, there was an ask of the council prior to my tenure uh, with one of my predecessors 
a few years back uh, for very area development to in earnest market the community. And that is what we have been doing um, and what we are requesting from the council funding to continue to them successfully. If we don't do that, I guess the question I would have of the council is who will? Um, and that is one of the reasons why we are asking for this additional increase. Um, I'd like to spend a little bit of time, and maybe if you don't mind me jumping around a little bit in my slides, just going through some of our accomplishments in the past year uh, plus. Um, and so with that, I'm going to jump over to a uh, spreadsheet that I sent to all of you this afternoon. Um, and just spend a little bit of time just kind of reading through um, for the benefit of the community and for the benefit of everybody here what we've been doing. Um, you know, I know, I assume, I apologize for my assumption, but that you receive on a monthly basis our updates uh, from our board uh, as to what we're working on. Um, but I wanted to take some time to just kind of spell out what we are doing uh, on a monthly, quarterly, and yearly basis, especially this past year. Um, so starting at the very top, um, the ADC wrote the grant for $1.2 million for the city that was received for the pump station work on the BNM road. The ADC wrote and was awarded two additional grants totaling over $5 million for the city, which Senator Sanders' office has approved and has also been approved by Congress. One is for the auditor auditorium, uh, totaling over uh, $3.4 million. The other one is for a new water pipe. Uh, from Dix Reservoir in Orange near the Eastbury Dam, and that's for over 2.2 million. Uh, the total of all three grants being approximately $6.8 million that the agency has brought into this community. Um, most recently, we've been named to the regional priorities list for the 2023 proposed Prospect Heights project um, to build over uh, 100 housing units on this particular property. Uh, we are considering, uh, as a board, um, the prospect of potentially purchasing this land to move the project along. Um, number four, the ADC uh, consults with uh, our kind of workshop on a new location. We show them multiple places for expansion, and they will be expanding into a building in Jockey Hollow in February of 2023 as a result. Uh, we met with the Davis building uh, multiple times and have showed them many uh, empty spaces and have showed that the empty spaces are multiple clients. Um, we've done business consulting with both parties. Uh, the old soups, soups and greens uh, building, as you know, the section of the building has been gutted and waiting for a tenant. Uh, we are actively talking with different interested um, businesses who want to move into that section. Um, we did secure just last month with the help of one of our board members, a tenant who will not be moving into uh, what was the old optical section of the building in February 2023. I'm happy to go through this entire list one by one. I think I'll pause for a second here and just get a, a preference of the council. Um, I think what I'm trying to show you is the work that we do, uh, the money that we bring to this community, and the importance of how we do that, certainly with my role uh, being funded and with the role of our marketing coordinator being funded. We can't do this without marketing. Uh, it certainly would not be done successfully. Um, and I think to kind of go back to my original point, um, if we're not marketing Barry, who's going to market Barry? Um, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why we're sitting here today is, is to ask for the funding to successfully continue to do what we do. Um, would you like me to spend more time running through each one of these items? Well, it's, uh, it's your time. Okay, yeah. I will do that then. I think these are all very important. I just wanted to pause. Um, we were, there's, excuse me, certainly. Man, there's 32 of them. There are, I know. Why don't you, why don't you highlight the ones that you feel <laughs> we'll do. And, and I think I can kind of put those in order. So I think, that's okay. Now. Yeah. You know, starting at the top, uh, I think, you know, going back to the $6.8 million that we recently brought into the city of the huge one, um, you know, you can almost stop with that. I think the point I'm trying to make is we are actively daily, weekly, monthly talking to business owners, trying to bring business in here. Uh, I mean, I'll scroll down to the bottom. Uh, this week we have a uh, lunch meeting set up with a large venue out of Burlington that wants to expand an area. Uh, they want to be here on our on our main street. Um, you know, we're we're talking to the Salvation Army. We're trying to help them with the sale of their building. Um, 
It, it, it is it's nonstop daily work. Um, it's very important for our community. It's about economic development. It's a mission of what we're about. But it, it can't be done without, I think it's, it's, my, it's my stressor here. Um, it, it just simply can't be done and, and done well. So um, with that, let me let me jump back over to, to the presentation and, and go into what would be slide four. Um, some of which I've just highlighted, but I'm, I'm going to stress again. So um, our accomplishments with the support of marketing this past year has been the, you know, the writing and uh, getting the awards of the 6.8 million that we just brought in, uh, the additional 1.2 million we brought in from the pump station on the BNM road, uh, and then this pre-grant application that we just successfully can, uh, completed, submitted, and then got named to the regional priorities list. It's a big deal. It's a huge win for Barry to actually be named for that list. There's a, a body of work ahead. Um, we are in the infancy of that. There's a lot to learn. There's a, a, a lot we're in the process of figuring out. But as we all know, housing is a, is a major issue here in this community and also in our region. And um, for Barry to be able to provide a solution to that in the next five years is huge. Um, and so we're very grateful and also proud to be named to that list. Um, and then, and then, as I mentioned, you know, the active 30 over 30 active successful business deployments, loan facilitations uh, in Barry that we're working on, um, all of which we started to go through. Um, on to the next slide, uh, and this is uh, a review of uh, the work that we've been doing um, with the support of Shannon Alexander. Um, we have begun a rebranding and a relaunch of our website, promotional videos, um, in the process of wrapping up a major industrial video, um, which we should be finalizing in the next month or two for launching on our website to recruit uh, major industry, uh, to continue to recruit major industry to vary. Um, Marketing, uh, continued marketing of existing businesses, considering expansion and relocation, uh, marketing of very community to try to get businesses seeking relocation and expansion. And all of this is done um, through our website, uh, through social media, um, through active you know, meeting and engagement with um, all of our varying stakeholders. Um, our marketing coordinator um, works to uh, support the organization um, with, with every single one of our projects, housing, business, and economic development. Um, as per our mission, um, is working very closely in partnership with uh, the partnership, the very partnership, of course, the very chambers, and, and lots of other uh, stakeholders around the region as well. Um, and then I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about um, Shan's um, day-to-day -day, uh, job. Um, I mentioned a key collaborator providing support for us. Uh, she works to conceptualize, develop, and execute uh, all of our marketing campaigns. Um, we work closely together on the creation and distribution of all of our content. Um, she and I work closely together on all the content for social media, for our blogs, and other communication. Uh, constantly working on varying uh, search engine optimization, SEO, and website updates. Um, of course, uh, bringing to us um, uh, some amazing photography as an artist, which we're really grateful to have. Um, so it's really above and beyond marketing. We're also getting uh, a wonderful opportunity for some um, professional photography. Um, acts as a ambassador and representative to Barry Area Development and also to the community. Um, and then assists us in management and fulfillment of varying types of printed and digital uh, marketing materials that we're working on. Um, Taking me down to um, really our last slide, which is a review of what I brought to you in December, which is the, the actual increase. Um, you know, our additional funding uh, that, that we're asking for for fiscal year 24 is a, a total amount of approximately $28,000, which supports um, my role and supports Shannon's role as our marketing coordinator. So it, it is um, 
same 15% uh, increase uh, from, from the base. Um, and, you know, uh, crucial to the success of us being able to market dairy and uh, bring new businesses here and then bring housing here um, without a doubt. Um, with that, I wanted to turn the floor over to, to Shannon to offer a few words as well. And, and then from there, take questions, provide any clarifications, et cetera. Hi. I just want to take the opportunity to speak on my behalf on uh, just a moment to say what an honor it's been to play all the roles that I have in this community. Obviously, the work that I do with Very Area Development, but also the previous volunteer work I've done with the school district, my role as photographer and board member for the Very Partnership, even my work at AR Market, it all affords me the ability <clears> to <throat> be present for all of the positive and great aspects of Barry. And not a lot of people have those opportunities. Uh, in the short period of time that I've had the pleasure of working with Ame, I've come to see that she's going to be an extraordinary executive director for the ABC. We both work great together and provide um, <clears throat> uh, provide different vital skill sets that uh, I think are crucial to this position. Uh, I think everybody's aware that some of various challenges are our image and our uh, reputation in the community and beyond. And some of my skill sets uh, and talents are the ability to see the good in those things and so portray them in a way that resonates with people. Uh, I hate to imagine not being in a position in a position any longer to be able to do that for the community. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, Manager Sterling Castro. I know you provided us a little bit of information, and um, um, I think it was a parent of Sterling Fine, but just if you were if you want to explain your rationale for the, um, the budget recommendation you made. And yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to take the. Can I leave this up? Take it down. Take it down because people can write on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and I, I, um, I think ABC is doing great work. Um, I, you know, I, I think that uh, really excited to work with MA and been really excited to work with Shannon. Um, I think the the recommendation here uh, that came from from us is really it, it's a a lot of it is in that situation, and um, you know we we've, we've talked uh, at length about the the budget condition that we've been facing ourselves as a city. Um, we uh, passed our um, we went through a very uh, difficult process on our own budget situation, um, and we recognize the great work of the ADC by by granting it the greatest uh, budget increase of any entity in the city. Um, that that said, we. Budgets are about making difficult decisions, and, and we had to make a difficult decision, and uh, at the same time trying to support um, what what we could. Um, and a, you know, fifteen percent increase is um, in a year where uh, where the overall budget increases uh, less than five. Um, I think is is trying to show our commitment to BADC. Um, I would also know, as I mentioned to the council, that um, all of the uh, outside entities we fund have external funding sources. Um, and I know I, I, can, I can anticipate what the answer might be, which is that the ADC serves, exists to serve the city and the town. Um, that said, you know, there are, I'm looking at Stephanie, who's, I can't imagine what percent of your budget is supported by grants. Uh, all of our budgets have to be supported by grants. Um, and so that those are the kind of things that go into our calculus. Um, it becomes a matter of, of mathematics and um, and trying to be um, and trying to make the difficult decisions that that budget requires. I, I would also, I would just finalize by saying that um, it's it's uh, you know this is an entity we fund jointly with the town. Um, it's my understanding that uh, the the very town manager uh, plans to include uh, the exact same. Um, uh, budget increase that we are uh, that we have recommended. So any additional change would be solely borne by the by the city. And, and, and uh, I saw I read in one of your recent reports, Amanda, that um, 
that you're exploring a reorganization that will allow you to have uh, receive grants and do more fundraising. What's is that correct? Correct. Uh, I mean, to clarify, we are pursuing a 501c3 status, which will allow us to certainly pursue grants that in the past we weren't able to pursue. Uh, as a 506, there's some limitations. To that. Yeah. I think that's what you're what you're talking about. And are you able under your current status to do fundraising, like for instance, the Grand City Garden Club that members mm -hmm. Um, are there any any revenues like like that that you're allowed to accept under your as a 506? Yeah. There's limited revenues we can accept as a 506. I mean, I'm not a tax attorney, so I can't speak, you know, completely to that. But what I do know from, from my past experience, a 501c3 status will certainly open up many more doors to funding and granting than we currently have to be. Um, you know, but to to uh, the managers, Nicholas, to your point uh, around other organizations, fundraising and, and grant raising, we're certainly not opposed to that whatsoever. And, and holistically, I think that's a great idea. I mean, whether we use it for marketing or we use it for a particular initiative or a project, um, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and that requires money and the support of both the city and the council. We're certainly not opposed to that. I think unlike... Um, and I'll use the partnership as an example because we work very closely with them in collaboration with them. Unlike the partnership, our work is about economic development. Our work is about bringing businesses here. Our work is about housing. Uh, our work is about supporting that. So we're not, you know, there isn't this quick, like, you know, uh, turnaround of get a grant, use it, spend it on a particular thing. You know, it's longer term, it's strategizing, it's planning, it, it's stuff that takes months, years, most for the most part, years. I mean, for instance, this prospect type project. And, and that work can really be done in a vacuum on its own. Um, it, it, in, in my humble opinion, as the executive director, it needs support of a strong marketing person to, to do that uh, effectively. Um, and I keep going back to, again, I, I'm new. Uh, I'll play that new card for a little bit longer, but I keep going back to my, my knowledge I've gotten from board members and whatnot about the council asking us to market. Um, and whenever that was, I don't know, it's part of my time. But I think when that ask was made, we, we took it seriously and we began to market. We, you know, we went through a process of creating a fund for you know, what's called the Barry Rock Solid Initiative that was used for specific purposes and we delivered on that. Um, this is that hasn't gone away. You, know, you can't just do one marketing thing and campaign and be okay, we did it, we're done, you know, we're good now. It's ongoing, especially when you're writing grants, long thinking about long term planning. Yeah, council goes on. No, this is young. I did already cut through here. And so, I'm just curious. My, my only concern is hearing Nicholas talk about the very town rate in which they're looking to fund the budget. Now, how much of that is going to end up falling on the city if, so say for example, the proposed budget is a certain number and Barry Town is only willing to kick in a certain amount, is that going to change how you guys feel? I just want to make sure the numbers aren't going to be construed differently. Does that make sense? I think so. I mean, we're we're asking for twenty eight essentially from both both towns, uh, from the city and from the town. Right. Um, so that is that's our request, and we will make the same presentation when the time comes to the town as well. Uh, if you're asking, you know, if the city does this and the town does that. So you know, my question is, if if we approve the twenty eight thousand five sixty six that you guys are requesting, uh -huh. which I'm in favor of, um, to, to support that. Now, if the town doesn't approve the funding request, is that going to change the makeup of you and Shannon? I don't foresee that change, changing the makeup. You know, I mean, you know, we're, we're on a course to grow and develop. As I mentioned before, you know, this process to, to become a 501c3 will allow us to open up grand doors that we haven't been able to open up before. Um, I, I'm kind of seeing this as we're putting all the necessary items in the fire for the best outcome. So I, I, I can't sit here and you know answer you exactly, but you know if we need to course correct and look at oh you know you're giving us 28, they're going to give us I'm making these numbers up by 25. Where are we going to come up with the difference of 3,000? Right. We will come up with that difference. <laughs> Make sure that, that as a council, if we were to approve the 28 566. The Barry City is going to make sure we get our bank for our buck. 
um, as opposed to very town cutting back. I see what you're saying. Gotcha. And, Absolutely and, not. We're here to serve both municipalities. And I, I feel that as your council weighs on, mm -hmm. um, I feel that you guys do do a great job and would make sure that that you know, the correct things happen. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to ask the question, finding, you know, hearing that Barry Town uh, is likely not going to fund the budget request that you guys have. Um, not that it changes my opinion, mm -hmm. um, but it is. Councilor Thank you. Um, and Amy and Shannon, thank you. And managers to Relic Castro. I've been calling you Nicholas. When I leave the house, Karen makes me say Storelli Castro three times. Because <laughs> I should address you as Storelli Castro. You made the comment that, you know, the, the budget is about mathematics and discipline. We started this meeting here in two very fine organizations. I can pretty much predict where that, that vote is going to go. And that's really a question of values. And that's, I guess, where I see this. Um, Pretty great ask, 50%, congratulations, but also congratulations on $5.7 million of funding into the city area. Congratulations on being the only organization that is trying to advance a major housing project in the city of area. You know, Amy, congratulations on a great meeting on Monday. You and I met for the first time. We spent about an hour together. I'm impressed. And Sharon, Shannon, I'm just impressed by your passion, your passion for this town, because that's something you can't buy. So I'm all about pressure. Uh, I understand what you're saying, Councillor, and I absolutely agree. Uh, I've been around for a long time, and I've watched the city fund things, and then the town wouldn't fund that, and we felt a little silly. So what I would propose to the council is that uh, we break the funding request into two pieces. Uh, the first is the recommendation of the manager, exactly as uh, the manager is really captured. I'm getting really good at that, uh, as, uh, as he put it forward to the council, but also to put another piece out there, and that would be the managing and marketing piece. And I know, Shannon, to say managing and marketing, you do a lot more than that. You're learning a lot about what MA does, about how economic development works in Berry City, and congratulations on that. So what I would propose is that we break that into a separate component and that, unfortunately, with apologies, it will be contingent on the town funding. it. So if the town decides that they do not want to fund that additional amount of money, then that uh, that amount of money would be return uh, would be retained in the budget as a surplus and return to the voters next year. It's not unprecedented. And I think it's a it's a fair resolution. I want to see what you can do with the additional money. Because quite frankly, I am impressed with the work that BADC has done in the past. I understand you're still playing the new card. You're going to do just fine. And then I, I, I can tell. <laughs> this is the last time. But, you know, you, I mean, there wasn't one question I asked you that you didn't know the answer to. Well, there was one. And you said, I'll get back to you on that. And then you got right back to me on that. So... You know, I am impressed. So that's what I would like to do, Council. Council Boone, did you have your hand raised? Yeah. So I actually have several questions, and I apologize. <laughs> so the first one yeah. or is Shannon, are you going to be responsible for um, rebooting basically the videos that were happening on the rock top? I think it was the, the videos. They had the videos for the Organizations, isn't that is that what you're? Part we of anticipate your reinvigorating the videos and the media that we've already accumulated and created. And MA and I have been in discussion about further uh, plans, similar similar plans on how we're going to develop other projects going forward. And, and if you're referencing sort of a concept of rebranding, um, no. No, I, I'm assuming you're going to keep the the very okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure what you were. What yeah. I wasn't clear on. No, I, I think that's a yeah. That's a great brand. Yeah, I mean, all, all of the videos have been completed. We're finalizing the last one in the next month, and they uh, they are in full active use now on the website. Okay. Yeah. I, I just went there and I couldn't find it, so I'll have to take a look again. Okay, I can send you the link. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, the next thing regarding the prospect housing project, um, and maybe I've seen it and I just forgot, but do you know about how much you think that's going to come on the tax rolls if that goes through? I can pull that up very quickly to give you so while you're doing that. Yeah. Um, the next question is you guys, the last time I remember, you guys had somewhere around two, three hundred thousand dollars in reserves. Is that correct? Two hundred and eighty-eight, I believe, as of December thirty-first. Okay. Um, so the so that was our answer. And I have the answer for you. Okay. So um, if non-homestead, um, we're looking at approximately thirty-two after five or ten years, thirty-two. Uh, million uh, if homestead approximately about the same. Okay. How much is city place? And, and that is eight. Eight million. Okay. Um, sorry. Well, I was just going to say I can send this to you again. That is in the regional priority application that you submitted. Um, certainly related to the council. No, it's okay. I mean, I, I can keep it in my head. So I just said. Um, the the next question is how much of an increase would this and the other two um, ballot items increase our our percentage? This would this would take us to five point zero. Five point one nine. Five point one nine. That's right. Five point one nine. With the ten and okay. five point zero one nine. But five point one nine. And just one thing, Councilor. I I don't propose additional spending without coming up with ways to pay for it. And I didn't realize that we would be asked to approve the budget tonight. So if you give me probably two hours with. Don and the manager, I'll show them how to pay for the additional 45 <laughs> Just to, you can see the excitement. I, I have a response. <laughs> I, okay. Um, the, the, next, the next comment that I want to make is I, I'm not really, and, and no offense, I'm not a on it. I'm not a big fan of the, um, you know, the fairy town doesn't do it, then we don't do it. I think that if we're going to support the project, we should just go forward and do it. Um, my my thought would be actually to put it on the ballot. Oh no, sorry, I was basically. But, um, my my initial thought would be to put it on the ballot, as this is technically the manager's budget, um, and you know the right to ask them to put it on. Um, but if you didn't want to, then I would say put it on the ballot as as a ballot item. Councilor Wilson? Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to start off by saying that clearly BADC has had its best year since I've been on the council. I want to give credit where credit is due. And so I just want to say that I appreciate all the work and all of the money and all of the passion that you bring to the community. Um, I, I do agree with Councillor Gooden on contingent funding with Barry Town. Um, I, I just don't like it. I don't think they you know, to the taxpayers of Barry to say, give us you know, this money that we may or may not need, and then we may or may not send it back to you if the Barry Town doesn't approve it. And I have been around long enough to know not to put my egg in the Barry Town budget basket. Barry Town budget basket. Um, I. I I really want to be open minded about this, but where I'm really struggling is that um, I really like Jen. I love Jen. Jen and I have. We have fun. It's great. Um, I don't take any of this personally, by the way. I like and I don't and I don't think you do. But what? But I feel as though the council's being put in the position where we're being said, "Give us fifty percent, or we have to fire Jen." And that's a really sucky feeling. I don't think we are saying that whatsoever. And I apologize if in any way that seems like that's the case. Well, we have no intention on firing Shannon. Would you <laughs> love, love to hear that? <laughs> However, you know, as, as the manager pointed out, you, you made the comment earlier in, when talking about the importance of 15 to 50. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't market Barry who way. Mm -hmm. And that makes it feel as though if we don't give you 50, we're not going to get any marketing. If we don't give you the 50, we're not going to get any marketing for Barry. 
And, and I also know that that's not true. And I, and I don't want to accuse you of misrepresenting anything. I just want to explain how I'm feeling as a counselor when looking at a, you know, grocery bills have gone up 10% over the past year. Things are really expensive right now. And I have never seen a you know, brave ask. I very firmly believe in a very strong starting negotiating position. Start out high so you eventually settle where you want to go. And I just don't know how I can justify right now a 50% increase to an overall organization's budget that we're funding uh, when we're nickel and diamond in so many other places throughout the city budget. And it, it, it seems, you know, I, I deal with I, I deal with a budget, I, I manage my program's budget at work, and it's not quite as big as the ABCs, but it's close. Um, and you know, I I wouldn't be able to put forward a proposal for a 50% increase to some of our funders right now. It just wouldn't happen. It just it, it's too much all at once for me. I, I think the 15% is. I think if you get 50% from both the city and the town, your budget's going up 30% next year. I think, I think that's a really good start. And I think that is a really good investment to reward for some of this work that's been done. You know, but when I'm talking to constituents and they're asking me how to justify a 50% increase to the budget to one of the three outside organizations that the city funds, that's a really hard conversation to have. And, and I understand, I really do understand the value of all of this hard work that's been done. Um, but, but it's a hard ask and it's a big number. And, and I don't know if we can just go there in one year. Thank you, may I respond? Please. Um, thank you. And I think I wanna to respond to the first thing you said, um, which was you, you held up the piece of paper that showed the work we've done. And I think you said something, and I, I'm sorry if I'm not quoting you correctly, but something to the effect of, this is one of the best years that BADC has ever had. The best. The best. And, and I guess I would ask you, why? Why is that? Because we're getting, we're, we're, because we're, we're getting actual results. We're getting results because yes. we're marketing. Yes. And we're doing that with the support of our marketing coordinator. Which is awesome, but yeah. also, but we're also facing really high inflation. I understand. We're facing really I just high want to point that out. Um, I and we want to continue to perform like that. And, and I promise you, I will do my absolute best to serve this community. I'm so grateful to be here and to be helping. Um, but this is a crucial role. So yes, it's a big ask and 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 a brave ask, uh, as you said. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. And I appreciate that. I really do. And and I'm. I, I'm still looking at the fact that even if you get 15% from both of our municipalities, that's a 30% overall increase to your budget, while you have $288,000 in reserves. No, it's 15, sir. You don't yeah. multiply by two. Um, well, 15% from each municipality. Oh, yes, yes. yes. No, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. CBA. Even, <laughs> even still, that 15% budget, that's three times more than the city's budget is. Like Karen said, flowers. Yeah. <laughs> um, one one thing I've been curious about is, you know, obviously it's a time of just unprecedented federal funding. Uh, it's pretty uh, the the federal taps on, the state taps on, um, and how are, how is the marketing linked to this results? And because when I when came before us last time, I asked them. Um, like what were the metrics of success? And the BADC didn't have any metrics of success. Hadn't done the uh, strategic planning that was on your, on the to do list. Um, and uh, and then looking back at the money that the taxpayers have invested, the fifty thousand dollars since the Rock Solid campaign, um, an evaluation. There hasn't been any evaluation of of, of that funding. And I know you you know you're wrapping the trucks and running around the England. Things like that, and and so what's the what's help me connect the dots? The, the taxpayers to say if we if we do an unprecedented increase in this, um, potentially taking money from an already very threadbare uh, city administration, um, what does that what does that do? Sure. Well, I think to address your first question, um, and you brought this up last month when I was here. Metrics are very important to me, and absolutely this community and this council deserve metrics and results as to the work we've been doing um, and how we've been choosing to do the work in terms of our marketing. Um, 
strategically. We we you, you mentioned something about wrapping trucks. I'm, I'm not sure what you're referencing um, when you made that statement. We're not wrapping trucks. Uh, we're focused pretty clearly and directly on our current economy, our current state of marketing, moving into a digital era, marketing towards business owners who want to move here, want to bring their families here, want to bring their businesses here, young entrepreneurs, old entrepreneurs, anyone across the gamut, woman, man, um, and targeting that in a modern era um, through varying marketing campaigns. That's my plan. Um, that's my goal, and I will deliver on that. Um, I will sit here a year from now and be able to show you full metrics on how I work on that. I, I wish I could speak more clearly to you know, all of the, the wonderful work my predecessors have done. Um, what, I, what I can come back to and can show you as a result of this past year's worth of work, plus not just this past year's worth of work is $6 million on the notes for barrier. Um, and that's huge. Um, so I keep coming back to that, but I do appreciate your your ask, man. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge supporter of metrics. How else can the community, other than listening to these meetings once a month, know the work we're doing? Uh, unless they can actually see some cold hard data, um, and I, I believe that's very important. And, and we can certainly provide that data to you from the past and for our community. Um, maybe maybe a little bit. We have for me to say this, but you know, prior to prior to you know when we stood before election in March, I think it's perfectly, perfectly reasonable to do. Um, well, and I, yeah, and I'd be more inclined to uh, invest in a, a strategy that has uh, metrics uh, that's based on the lessons learned for the, sure. the considerable amount of money that you guys sure. already spent um, uh, through under the stewardship at the ADC. And it's not often I find myself at the right. Oh, Council goes on the time. This has been a conservative budget year, and uh, and and, uh, and the department has really dug deep to find settings. And and in, in many cases, I think the city um, is undercutting itself um, uh, with such a, a thin <laughs> budget. But they, I think, they've listened to council and the tough measures we've set. And they've listened to uh, they've listened to people of Barry who are um, have uh, are highly cost per in housing, in groceries, and many other things. And, uh, and, I, and I think many organizations, including Gates, have been doing fantastic work. Um, but I don't have enough I don't have, I have enough information about how this money it would would uh, warrant. Well, say yes to. Sure, I understand. I mean, I'll, I'll go back to our focus in 24, which we talked about last month, we're talking about again this month, which is four things, economic strategy, housing, business development, and strategic planning. Those, those are our focus goals that your funding and the town's funding will allow us to deliver on in this next fiscal year, which begins July 1. Um, and you know, sitting here this evening, the deliverables, the things we've delivered on this past year, the best year we've had to date is as a result of marketing support. The deliverables sitting here a year from today on economic strategy, housing, which we're jumping right into, business development, bringing more business here, and strategic planning, which is overdue, and, and we all know that and we want that, um, will be done again through, through the assistance of government and support. That's a question. Yeah, um, I, I think the chances of it getting into the budget tonight is probably not going to happen. I'm not going to lie, it's based on you know, like the reading of the room. However, um, you know, the idea of putting it on the ballot and letting the voters make that decision is something that I think is probably a really good idea. I mean, we've done that before. We put it on the ballot. The voters make that decision. If they want a 5.19% increase, that's what they'll get. And I think that's a choice that people can make on that. And, and you know, that's that's my thoughts on it. Um, I guess I'll make that motion. Motion from Council Group to put it um, before the voters. To put the uh, increase of over and above the manager's recommendation on the ballot. I mean, I'll do that as fallback position, I guess. Okay. Uh, I guess kind of right. So there's a moment. There's a moment. I would more think that that's what our community needs to help. I mean, holy mackerel, what are our values? 
Well, I'm willing to make this invest. I look at it as an investment. Doesn't mean it's going to happen next year, because with all due respect, Amy and Shannon, next year I'm going to be saying, "What did you do for me last year?" You know, and we all live and die on our success or our failures. And what I've seen from your organization is nothing but success. And I want to continue that investment. And that doesn't mean it's a, for me, it's not a slam dunk <laughs> next year. But I appreciate what you've done. And I want to give you the resources to do more. So that's where I'm coming from. The we only funded at Barry Town does. I mean, that was really as a compromise to some of you who I know are a little soft on it. And honestly, as a city resident, there have been times, yes, I am still singing over the million dollars for the Grant Museum, as much as I value the Grant Museum. The city of Barry funded it to the tune of a million dollars and the town of Barry declined. Um, so, you know, I'm not unmindful of those things. If it were my personal preference, fund your budget request to the extent you have requested it and hold you accountable and have you back here at the council. And like I said, if we're not willing to make an investment in the economic future of our community and we have no other positions in City Hall who can commit to the future economic success of our community, well, who the heck's going to? So there's no, no second to the motion. Councilor, you have motion. Um, I just wanted to say that I love the work you're doing, especially with Prospect Street housing development. I think it's attempted great. And many of the work for work is just as great. But I, I don't think I can go back to my voters and say 15% seems like a great increase. And I think it's what we can do this year. <clears throat> Most of my the people in my neighborhood say, well, when are you going to pay the street? Which person I don't do, but you know, I don't have a good answer for that. So it doesn't seem like it's something that I couldn't support the additional increase beyond the 15%, which seems to be more than that. And I really appreciate the work. Councilor Walsh, is that? Yeah, I, I just want to say, I just want to respectfully and politely push back a little bit and say that it's, I don't want this conversation to seem that those of us who have concerns are not willing to invest. I am willing to invest. I'm mean, willing to invest up until as much as the manager thinks that we should invest. And that would be, that's the most responsible because I'm, I'm in city hall pretty often, especially when union negotiations are happening. I'm in city hall pretty often, but I'm not here in the same way that Nicholas is. Or the manager sort of pastor is. Uh, I'm not talking to the department heads as much as he is. I am not getting as much of an in-detail view of everything that happens operationally within the city budget as the manager. And so, you know, I, I, I think some of my colleagues and frankly, some of your board members could tell you that if you came in here three years ago with a 15%, I'd be going down five just to keep it consistent with the raises that we get from other outside organizations of the city. I think 15% is a really good investment from the city into the AEC. And I want you to receive that 15%. I don't want the perception to be that if we're not willing to go all the way up to 50, that we're not willing to invest in the AEC and not willing to invest in the community. Uh, because we are making an investment, we're just also trying to balance uh, all of the other competing needs and all the hard work that not only y'all do, but that our city staff and our department has to do on the day and the day basis. Thanks, Michelle. Um, I, I would reiterate what other people are saying in terms of how appreciative I am of the work that has been done this year, and it, it's phenomenal. I also, um, I don't know how we can support it. I mean, because we really have cut this much to the bone and people have given up a lot. And, and I think there's a feeling on many people's part that we've almost done short shrift to the very basic needs of the city. And I know development is also a very basic need, I don't know how to square it. Fifteen percent is much more than other people or other groups are getting. Fifty is almost unconscionable, as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, and for me, I think even fifteen percent is is high, but I'm willing to respect the manager's recommendation 
Um, and I would love to see BADC, uh, you know, collect um, outside revenues. And even the grandmas on the Grand Entry Garden Club who go out there and weed and plant and beautify our city are contributing to their organizations. And we also see the Titans of industry putting some money on the table for the organization, too. So we, yeah, so I don't want to be it anymore. So I think the, the real issue is whether or not we put it in the budget, put it on the ballot, or don't do anything at all. So I think that the first motion to see whether or not it would go into the budget would be I make an action. Okay. What? What is make a motion to put it into the budget so that would be the full amount that they're asking? And we'll just vote it down. It's okay. So let's just move through the process to get through. So there's a motion to uh, approve the budget request as presented by the ADC. Correct. Is there a second? Yes, sir. A second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, so that moved on. The next the next thing was democracy. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing to look at I would encourage would be to, to put it on the ballot for the voters to make that decision. It's not in the man manager's uh, budget. It's something that you know the, the voters say, hey, we really want this. And that's what we do. So I'll make the motion to add the additional from the 15% that's recommended in the budget. To and I don't know what the number is. So Carol, if you 20,492. Thank you. Yeah. See, and this is the reason why we have you to help. <laughs> so that amount right there <laughs> on the ballot will be ABC. So there's a motion. Second. There's a second. Any discussion? Under discussion, now, I'm curious, does the organization ever use marketing resources for campaign or election related, um, or has it ever in the past used um, its resources for campaign or election related communications, like like when there's an item on the ballot and you're using BADC money to print signs to say vote tests on this ballot item? I would have to concur with that board. I don't think we've ever used money for campaign purposes. I, I'm sorry, I can't sit here and answer that without yeah, being no, involved. Not. Yeah. Not. Uh, so all those in favor of that, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, Dave? Okay, so I heard Councilor Lozon, Councilor Waza, Zach as, as yes is Councilor Booten and Councilor Shondell as yes is and also Councilor Oak. So that takes it to the ballot. And thank you. This is this this gives it a way for the voters to weigh in on if they think that this type of increase is is doable. Thank and you for hearing all this. Yes, really you. appreciate it. Thank you for all your time. Thank you, and I and I thank you, Janet. Okay, so quick announcement. Um, thanks to Rick. So the water leak repair has started outside and there's some water coming into the um into the back lot so just folks be cautious as you exit to the office oh geez i think you're right i think you're right yes yeah. 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 That takes us to uh, ARPA Community Engagement Report. So, uh, I, um, as preparing for this conversation tonight, I thought 